We all remember where we were on the morning of September 11, 2001. Regardless of whether you were getting ready for school, driving to work, or just watching the morning news, the attacks on America felt as if the entire country stood still to watch the events unfold. That was true for those of us who were witnessing the day secondhand. Now imagine how it felt while you were at the center of one of the attacks in Washington, D.C., or stuck overseas with little idea of what was happening stateside and flights to the U.S. grounded indefinitely. That was the case for Jessica Aguilar, who was working as an intern for then-Senator Tim Johnson, and her now-husband, Anthony Pizer, who was participating in a semester at sea and was just outside of Osaka, Japan. They're here today to give us their account of what it was like being in the area of the attacks and trying to get home after the fact. Welcome. It's great to talk to you guys. You, I don't have any firsthand experience with this, right? So let's start with you, Jessica, and tell us about your day that day and your experience. Yeah, so I was uh, interning at the time for Senator Tim Johnson. I was a junior in college at Luther College, and uh, there's a Lutheran College Washington semester program. So it's a consortium of Lutheran colleges, including Augustana, and you spend half your time interning in D.C., and then you take classes at night. And so I had uh, a day internship with um, Senator Johnson in his office, and I had just started probably a couple of weeks earlier and in a senator's office there's tvs everywhere so as everyone was trickling in in the morning you started to hear the news about the first tower and the second tower and it was becoming clear that this was more than just an accident and so um being in the capitol knowing that that's always a target i think there was some apprehension and um but there was no evacuation at that point. I think once uh, the Pentagon was hit, uh, then things um, became a little more difficult and um, decisions were being made about what we should do from there. Um, and there was oh, another plane in the sky at this yes, point that they knew was. was. Well, and I think the other thing, thinking back on that day, is initially there were a lot of different reports of other major buildings that had been struck, but really it was because um, in Washington, D.C., at least, the smoke coming from the Pentagon made it look like things on the mall were on fire. Or at one point, um, there was a report that the USA Today building was on fire, which was right next to um, the apartments that I was living in in Arlington. And so it was very difficult. It was a difficult situation to understand what we should do. Um, should we leave? Should we stay? Where was the safest place to be? And ultimately, Senator Johnson and the senior staff members decided that our office was going to evacuate. And there were uh, a few staffers who had um, homes right on Capitol Hill. Uh, and so when we evacuated the building, we split up and um, it was kind of pandemonium outside. And it was unclear. It probably did not seem like a good idea to take the Metro home. And so uh, we ended up holding up in one of the staffers' townhomes on the hill. And luckily, I mean, at that time, I didn't have a cell phone. Most people did not have a cell phone. And so it was trying to rack my brain to know I, I obviously could call my parents. I remembered that phone number and luckily remembered the phone number for my apartment. And one of my roommates had made it back home. So I was able to tell them I was okay uh, and what I was doing. But I ended up spending that day after probably a half hour or so, um, there were no calls going anywhere because everything was just jammed up. And so I think luckily we were able to, everyone was able to call a few people and let them know. But uh, I ended up spending the whole day there just watching the news, trying to assess what was going on. And that evening, one of the other interns and I, she was at uh, George Washington University and we took the Metro home and we were literally the only two individuals on the metro going back to where we were and really the last stop the pentagon stop was a few away from my apartment yeah. and so that was where things ended i actually was able to sit down with your mom recently and she had some remarks to make on that day too trying to get a hold of you and make sure you were fine and let everyone here know you were fine too so let's hear from sue it was um 9 11 was pretty traumatic for the whole family um Actually, I had to go to Washington High to tell my younger daughter because they were going, you know, it was going through the school that her sister was all right, that I had talked to her and that she was safe. Um, it, was, it was a difficult time and trying to track where Jess was during that day and knowing that 
you know, that she got safely back to her apartment uh, later in the day. Anthony, let's move to you now. You were dating Jessica at the time, and you're off the coast of Japan trying yep. to figure out what's going on, where's Jess, how's everybody. So walk me through that part. Sure. So we had left Vancouver um, eight days prior, and um, we had uh, a core class uh, that the whole ship uh, participated in. We had a, a test the next morning. So when 9-11 when actually happened, it was 2 a.m., and we were all sleeping on the ship um, where I was at. And so... Um, so we wake up in the morning and my roommate and I are getting ready for the day and preparing for, you know, the, the test and, uh, an announcement comes over the ship, uh, loudspeaker that says, uh, due to the tragedy, um, our, our core test has been canceled. And we look at each other and we're like, what? And coincidentally, um, the, uh, the bar on the, on the ship had been open for the first time the night before. So we immediately think something has happened that maybe somebody got injured or, heaven forbid, fell off the ship or something like that. And you found out it was that. a lot more. And we walked upstairs and we didn't, have any, uh, we didn't have any televisions or anything like that on the ship. All we had was internet connection. And so there was all these printouts um, of pictures and... and um, and I've got, you have the paper from that day too. Um, yep. In so we poured it in Japan and it was incredibly moving because we had um, this, uh, well, so so my first instinct goes to Jess because, you know, yeah. by that time the, the, the Pentagon's been hit, the towers are down and I'm just, we're reeling, right? And there's, there's people on the ship that have parents who work in the towers. So like everybody's trying to figure out, you know, with no phone connection and no all we have is internet and um and so we port so we all kind of process that day and then the next day we port in osaka japan and it was one of the most incredible experiences because the what is the equivalent of their municipal band greets us at the port and they're playing the song yesterday by the beatles and it, as a tribute um to our loss because we're a thousand Americans, mm -hmm. you know, pulling into port. Let's walk through some of this before before we're done here too. Because as you continue to go around, your your travels have changed a lot. You had a lot of countries on your path that needed to be changed because of what happened. You spent a lot of time. You've got a lot of different papers from different areas. One thing that was as this unfolded, you have a paper from India, I think, where you saw anthrax, and then we have this Washington post, and we have Jess on the cover as she was in Tim Johnson's office with the anthrax and having to get tested as well. Yeah, so that was, that was one of the incredible things about this is every port that we went to, we saw a different reaction based on the country that we we're in. And so um, right here, you'll see uh, the little blurb when I was in India about uh, Senator Daschle receiving the anthrax letter. And so I'm thinking, well, Senator Daschle's office yeah. is right next to Senator right. Johnson's office. Like, that's where my, my girlfriend is. Right. And, um, and so, like, we're trying to, and then we're also coordinating time zones, right? Because we're trying to line up, like, okay, w you know, and then it's in the time of, like Jess said, there's no cell phone. So there's phone cards and, and that and sort of thing. dial up. So in my apartment, we had dial up internet. So if someone was on sending emails, then you couldn't make a phone call. So there was a lot of coordination. A lot of coordination. And... So there, we're sending emails to coordinate to then get on the phone. And then, so I see this, I'm immediately alarmed, right? Right. Um, and then in the meantime, like every, like when we landed in, uh, in India, people were coming up to us, you know, because we're Americans and saying, you know, uh, you know, you know they want to talk about it, right? And, and so you're getting like the local flavor mm -hmm. for the reaction. And then, and then a few days later, Jess ends up in line for anthrax testing, you know, and uh, is on the cover of Washington Post. Before we're out of time, you guys made it through all of this together. Um, how has it, do you think, changed your life going forward? I think for us, it was really, um, you know, I think that day for so many people really put life in perspective and how things can change you know, in, in a moment. And so for us, I think it made us closer and really, I mean, being a junior in college, how seriously do you take relationships? But I think it made us closer and certainly, you know, hearing my mom speak, it, it made you realize what was important. And I think for us, that really solidified our relationship mm -hmm. and our commitment to each other. Yeah. Quite the journey, and you had to stick together and figure out from a ship at sea <laughs> to Washington, D.C. during all of that chaos. And 
and kind of understanding it as it unfolded and not knowing and having everything change. And, and so but it's really been a pleasure to get to hear your side of the story though mm -hmm. today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Thanks you. for having us.